am poet and writer Kay Spivey and today what I wanted to talk about was why are gay relationships so popular among female writers? People finding various ways to romantically pair up two of the main male characters or maybe two of the main side male characters but like the boys be kissing. Why is this so popular especially among younger women? And I'm just to start by saying can it be just fetishizing? Yes, absolutely. There are plenty of cases where this is simply fetishizing and where it is harmful to gay men and to the LGBTQ plus community. However, there are also cases where fetishizing is not at all the intention or the idea or the practice. I don't think that this is something that is just a dangerous kink that a lot of especially straight white girls are into. And I want to talk about why and why media still today doesn't have many safe spaces for younger girls and why that has sort of led to a lot of them finding their safe spaces in spaces that would otherwise seem to be more for for gay men. A lot of this is going to come from my own experience of growing up in the 90s and early 2000s and nowadays things have changed. Back when I was growing up, being gay wasn't really okay. Like you couldn't get married still. Gays and lesbians being allowed to get married is a recent development. That was after my time at school. Gays and lesbians being prominent in media that we consume. Transgender people being prominent in media we consume. That was not the case in the 90s and early 2000s. You simply barely saw any of it. Teachers could still be fired from their jobs for coming out as gay. You could be kicked out of the military for coming out as gay or for being revealed to be LGBTQ+. Like, it wasn't as okay back then. And so I am coming from a perspective of back when I was young and the reasons that so many people that I knew and so many people in so many of the fan communities really headed towards the gay side of things. But this is something that's not gone away. It's not something that probably will ever go away, but there are a lot of reasons for that. So those are all of my disclaimers. Let's just get into it. Let's talk about how when you're a girl in middle school and high school, one of the main things that people say is the worst thing you can be, other than, let's say, not pretty, not popular, other things that kids are worrying about in middle school and high school, getting bad grades, failing, whatever your worries were, they also liked to drill into you that getting pregnant was one of the worst things you could do. That you being pregnant was a you problem and it showed that you were a bad person in one way or another. Men don't have this stigma. That's why you hear about teenage moms and you don't hear about teenage dads. Because the dads, a lot of times, are able to walk away. So pregnancy for a lot of people then manifests as something kind of scary. It definitely manifested for me as something that was like the worst thing that could happen. I'd been told it was the worst thing that could happen. I internalized that very deeply. And so when reading things like my biggest example I remember is in the comic, uh, the manga series Nana. When Hachiko gets pregnant and there's a moment, I think in the manga she makes it real metaphorical and she has like the, the big image of like the cracking the egg with the small image of her standing below when she realizes. And I was horrified. I stopped reading the manga for a while because I was just like cannot deal, cannot handle that. I was probably like a sophomore in high school. It was beyond what I could handle. I was like sick to my stomach basically. So pregnancy, to be avoided at all costs. The other scary thing that girls are starting to be exposed more and more to is sexual harassment and rape. And learning what these things are, maybe even from a first-hand perspective, it becomes something that is either fascinating in a morbid sense or terrifying. On the other hand, a lot of the media that you're consuming, be it like action adventure or even in romance, horror, any genre, typically the male characters just have better relationships with each other. Male characters tend to be allowed to bond over things like friendship and respect, which are just like really appealing in terms of a relationship. Let's just talk about how two guys getting along and having like a deep, meaningful, respectful relationship with each other where they can count on each other and rely on each other to do everything. That just seems like such an appealing relationship. Two men, male presenting people, instant respect for each other. There's no chance of either of them getting pregnant. 
That's a whole other kink. We won't go into that. We're skipping. That can sometimes get pushed into the fetishization category. We're just gonna skip it. But the idea that the two of them need and love and care for each other, whether it's in a friendship or as finally the writers were like, oh, it totally is a relationship. And you're like, all right, that's a whole other situation with queer baiting. I won't go into that, but I will leave a resource down below if you're interested. So the male characters already have more appealing or late relationships than they typically have with the female characters or that the female characters are often allowed to have with each other. A lot of times female characters, maybe there will only be one in a media. Let's talk about how often that happens. You try and pair up the Avengers. If you're pairing everyone up in the Avengers, most of them are gonna be gay. There's only one Black Widow and only one Captain Marvel. And let's be honest, Captain Marvel's a lesbian. So most of the boys are gonna have to be together. <laughs> Yeah, because there's also Wanda. There are plenty of other examples we could go into. So now let's go back to the pregnancy thing. If you're pairing up two male characters, they're automatically safe from pregnancy. The mutual respect is then built into the relationship. They're both dudes. One of them isn't going to berate and put down the other. They're not going to expect the other to be lesser or, or subservient or any of the other things that are a little bit cringe but kind of built into a lot of romance genres. Especially if you were watching rom-coms, especially from like the 90s. There are a lot of them where the power dynamic is really off balance to the point where it's a little bit disturbing, honestly. The man is expected to be macho. The woman is expected to be wilting. You know, she has to be saved. She has to be rescued. He has to be the strong one. She has to be the loving one. Those kind of stereotypes, they get not only annoying, but when you're thinking about relationships for yourself, a lot of times that's not what you want. You're not looking for this hyper-masculine man who will berate you and tell you that you're weak. You want someone who will mutually love and respect you. And so those relationships and the men become very, very appealing. Plus, no chance of the pregnancy. Plus, there's an extra forbidden element that's built into that. Less so now when it's becoming more and more accepted and people are getting better and better about writing it as accepted in the cultures of their writing as well. But especially when I was growing up, the forbidden element was right there at the forefront. First, we had to get past that we're both gay and then we got to having a mutually respectful relationship. Good stuff. Harder to do when you're like, I am man and woman. We are going to be together because we're the only man and woman who are the main characters, like in Castle. All these outdated references, probably. But by taking out the element of the unbalanced power dynamic, lack of mutual respect, problems with the potential for pregnancy that are already built into having a female character involved in the relationship that has always been built into society and thus you have to actively work against. If you take that aspect completely out, there's a lot more freedom to, to safely explore deeper ideas of what a relationship is and maybe even more dangerous concepts that you might feel more comfortable going deep into something a bit more dangerous. The focus can be on the healing in that and not in the inherent almost expectedness, especially in the culture of popular media. It's kind of the same thing as when younger girls get really into boy bands and people are like, oh, it's so stupid, they're into the boy bands, but it's kind of a safe space to figure out like, oh, I'm attracted to this kind of personality type. I'm attracted to this kind of behavior. I'm attracted to this with the safety barrier of is never gonna happen. Being obsessed with two men possibly being together, you can be deep into the like, what connects them? What is so formulative about their relationship? Where's the love aspect coming from? What is love? Without any of the other fears that can be really overwhelming and make it hard to jump into things like the romance genre when you're a lot younger. You can jump into the whole idea of sex as a concept without it being penis and vagina and baby gets made. It can be a lot more sensual. You can learn about sex as more of a a sensual, loving experience without having to have all of the baggage that goes with that, all of the pain that goes with that, all of the stigma that goes with that. Guys can have sex at a younger age, society says, without it being a black mark on their character, 
women having sex at a younger age, oh no, that's not okay. It's another layer of problematic internalized thinking removed and allowing you to enjoy the content more. Now, like I said before, it's not that it's not problematic in any way. Like there is the problem that I think has gotten a lot better now of simply wishing to kill off the, the actual love interest from something. There are a lot of problems, uh, especially earlier in fan fiction where you would kill off the love interest or she'd be a nasty bitch or something. And the female characters were always terrible or non-existent in order for the boys to be together. Cause you're like, well, he can't be with the one he's destined to be with cause he's with this other guy. So she either doesn't exist or she's terrible in my universe. And that's problematic in its own right. Half the time though, the problem is she's either not an interesting or not a good character to begin with. Like she's so easy to take out of the plot and have them together because the boys are already having this deep, formulative, loving relationship together that was friendship. And he's with this other character and she's just there to be the love interest maybe doesn't really contribute to the plot. Maybe it's just here to be a sexy lamp leg. It is hard to understand why, oh, I have to ship this guy with this girl, but he has a better relationship over here. And so the, the want to cut out the character has nothing to do with the fact that she's a girl. It has to do with the fact that she was written by a man who doesn't really care about women is like, well, lady is love interest. There we go. It may not be her fault. And honestly, there are more things written now where the female characters are better written in the fan fiction as the side character to the gay romance than they are in the actual medium where they're supposed to be a main character and a love interest. Just saying. <laughs> now, are a lot of mainstream boys loving boys or MLM, men loving men, gay relationships written by women? Sometimes, yeah. I'm thinking of like Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, which already has two sequels, although we won't talk about the second one and the third one's not quite out yet. Yeah, and can it be harmful to the gay community that women are writing these roles, uh, women are writing these stories rather than the gay men that they're about? Yes, it definitely can be. I think there is still some good in it, in that it's getting better. More gay relationships out there in the universe means that there can be more room for more gay relationships. As some stories begin to pave the way, maybe written by people who aren't part of the LGBTQ plus community, more stories by people who are in the LGBTQ plus community make their way through publishing, get out into the world. And if we continue to support those voices, we get more and more stories like that that we can all enjoy. And that is inherently a good thing. More people writing about their own experience is always a good thing. I just don't think that we can use that to discredit young women who are really looking for these spaces as safe spaces to explore different ideas of love and sexuality, but are using the safest possible space that they know of, which is fictional gay men. I think that there is something to be said to there being more cake for everyone, but I also think there's something to be said to like, leaving the young girls alone. There's a lot of hate on basically everything that younger girls are into. And many girls are also exploring gay men as a concept before finding out that they're either transgender or lesbians. And moving through that doorway into a deeper understanding of themselves. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, of course there's fetishization, but I don't think that's what the vast majority of people are doing with it. I think to a greater extent, people are trying to tell stories about deep emotional matters and are finding a medium that works not for shock value, but for removing a lot of other stigmas that otherwise require a lot of explaining. And if that's not what you're trying to do with the story is explain away all of the problems that society has created based around the female body, sometimes using the male body is the way to do that without having to focus on those topics specifically. But let me know what you think. This has just kind of been some thoughts I've had for a really long time about how women had kind of taken over these spaces and they had it from the beginning, especially in fan fiction, but I don't think that it's malicious and I don't think it's something that we should discourage based upon the safety level that it gives people to kind of 
begin to explore things that are otherwise pretty scary. Are there better ways to do it? Maybe. Like, honestly, leave your opinions down below. I'm gonna leave uh, some other related content down below as well. Do you think I'm gonna just leave this open-ended here because I think this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while and that I think is relevant and that I think has a lot more room for talking about a lot more layers of this, like a lot more layers. I've barely touched on some of the main issues going on here. This goes into other things. Uh, this goes in many different directions, like why are lesbians a a uh, little less accepted, especially among younger women. We could go in a whole different direction, but that's what I'm gonna go over today. Good luck to you, good luck to all of us. If you like this video, like and subscribe and follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter at KSpivey and my website is kspivey.wordpress.com. Have a good day, bye!